ladies and gentlemen, this is Ryan Treasure, VP of Broadcast Operations for VoiceAmerica.com. We're at CEO Space December 2015 at lovely Weston Lakes Las Vegas Resort Hotel and Spa. Right? It's a mouthful. That one does such a great place. Uh, go check us out. We're live, uh, voiceamerica.com forward slash live events. Coming up next, I have this interview with, uh, Tracy Hazard and Tom Hazard from Has Designs. You can check out their website at hasdesign.com or find out all about 3D printing at 3dstartpoint.com. Guys, thank you so much for joining the show today. Welcome. Thanks, Ryan. Thanks so much for having us. Awesome. We really appreciate it. Um, CEO space, right? What a great event. Look at all the people behind us, uh, you know, watching uh, everybody network and kind of get together and talk about next level steps for their businesses and what, you know, they're going to do for 2016. And then, you know, just wrapping it all up in the end with a nice expo style environment of networking. It's just amazing place. This is fantastic. This is the biggest expo that we've seen at CEO space yet. And this is our third event that oh, we've been to. So. That's great. That's great. So are you guys uh, new for 2015? You've been to multiple ones in 15 or, or, or previous years as well? Multiple ones in 2015. And I can't believe we didn't know about it before. This is like the biggest hidden secret. Oh, yeah, it absolutely is. Uh, Jeff Spinard, the CEO of Voice America, has been friends with uh, Bernie for quite some time. We've been to you know a bunch of CEO space events over the course of the last 10 or 15 years, uh, and it's been really cool to kind of watch it grow and become a little bit uh, a larger entity as time goes on, and then you know meeting awesome people like both of you. And uh, of course, in the space that you're in, uh, I'm a big technology dork. I, I deal with all the technology and um, the team of technologists and uh, engineering for audio at Voice America. So uh, you know when you guys came up and I I'm looking at uh, Tom's tie. It's a 3D printed tie, literally 3D printed. If you if you were to look at it, and I know uh, Winston will get some photos of this 3D printed tie. We'll get posted up on social media at uh, facebook.com forward slash voice America talk radio. But it's really like when you look at the tie and it lays flat, you don't know that it's a 3D printed tie. It looks like a regular tie. Tell us a little bit about that thing. You know, it was quite a challenge to create this tie, but, you know, wanted to have something to wear these types of events. And we went and and just made a design project out of it. And, you know, it's a bunch of interlocking pieces and even all the way around my neck. This is not a clip-on tie. This the thing cool goes thing about all the way it, around it. The cool thing about it is it's actually printed in one piece on a 12-inch uh, 3D print bed. So it's kind of like a challenge, not only in terms of a design structure, but how you build it and how you print it. And it took over 100 hours for Tom to design it and 100 hours for him to dial the technical settings in to produce it. Wow, that is amazing and uh, that really good work. It's fantastic. And you guys, go check out some of the stuff that they do. Um, I know you guys have the WTFFF podcast that's on 3dstartpoint.com. Tell us a little bit about the radio show and, uh, and what you guys do with that. So we try to decipher FFF. What is FFF? What the FFF? And FFF is fused filament fabrication, which is the technical term for 3D printing. But what we're trying to do is really get businesses and individuals, especially students and teachers, to understand what 3D printing can do, what the op opportunity is, and what the advantages are, and just get started. And get started and scale the learning curve as fast as possible so that they can get going printing. Because it's not easy, but it's really great to, uh, to start to take advantage of such an early technology at an early stage. Yeah, no, you're absolutely right. I uh, was talking a little bit before we started the, uh, uh, the interview here that I, I kind of follow some 3D printing stuff as it relates to the Second Amendment and people making, you know, different uh, uh, gun parts and different things out of uh, 3D printing devices. And I was saying that I, I think it's really cool on the technology side because it's just really advancing. Uh, you know, I see some really cool things ahead of the curve when it comes to uh, plastic car parts, uh, you know, especially for uh, some of the people out there that do, you know, restorations of old cars and it's hard to get, you you know, a pair of plastic taillights for a 1950s uh, vehicle or, uh, you know, something maybe even like a Camaro or something like that. So uh, definitely like the way that the technology is going in the space. Um, why don't you guys give us a little bit of a rundown on, you know, specifically maybe what's your niche, uh, with what you guys do with Has Design? Within the 3D printing space, you know, it's our mission to bring 3D printing to more regular consumers. And, you know, it's been very popular in the engineering space and the maker spaces for a lot of years. We've used 3D printing developing conventional products for 15 years. But now desktop 3D printing is really making that accessible to regular people who want to get into it. And there's so much opportunity for them. And this is going to change the face of retail and localized manufacturing in the U.S. And we're trying to help make that attainable and reachable 
to average people so and, they can understand it. And design is the biggest challenge part of it. So our regular business has design is focused on consumer retail products. And we've done like 250 consumer retail products that you buy every day. We're what you call ghost designers. Right. And so you don't know we designed it, but we did. And uh, anyway, they uh, we decided that we really would help people focus on how to make good products through 3D printing so that they can really change their businesses and do things like you were mentioning about automotive replacement parts. There's a whole industry, a whole Huge. business that could be developed yeah, there. Absolutely. Um, so tell us a little bit about, um, you know, as it relates to the, the industry with 3D printing, you know, if, if, I'm, if I'm a home uh, uh, person, I want to get started with maybe 3D printing, you know, what are some of, you know, uh, give us a list of maybe the five most needed items if someone just wanted to get started on, you know, a hobby basis doing some small 3D projects at home. You know, you really need to get into a CAD program and learn how to use one. And there are several that are really good entry-level products, and they're free online. You know, Autodesk 123D, Google SketchUp, you know, Tinkercad. these sorts of programs are, uh, are something that there are video tutorial series on, on YouTube, and you can learn and jump right in. But you've got to learn how to make something in a three-dimensional model if you're going to make, you know, unique things to 3D print. So and can, yet, Tom mentioned video tutorials. That's the first place I would start. And there's like i3D creatives and a bunch of those. That's really a great place to start to see what you're getting into. So really, it kind of starts with the design process and some type of 3D modeling software. And then once you get, you know, kind of the design implemented in, in a digital environment on your computer, then at that point, you would um, move that design into a hardware function uh, to do the uh, FFF, right? Yes, that's right. And, you know, there's have been a lot of advances in 3D printers and you can get one as low as $350 in, and there are some really good ones around the $600 price point. And then, you know, as you get more into it and you want a little more advanced features, then you go to, you know, a thousand, between a thousand to $3,000. But so it's, it's very accessible now. Oh, wow. That's, I was actually under the impression that it was much more expensive to get into something like that. So thank you for letting our listeners know uh, about that information. I know that there's uh, quite a few uh, techie people that listen to the voiceamerica.com site that would definitely be interested. Uh, coming up, we also have uh, Mr. Winston Marshall Price who jumped in uh, as well. Winston, thank you for joining the interview. Hello, hello. It's so nice to be here once again. I actually have a question for both of you. Uh, listening to this conversation, um, because I can follow along with conversations, uh, my question is, is where do you start the education of people who are ignorant of what you do and or are functionally ignorant? Why should I do this? You know, I have no idea. I didn't know what this was even before I met you. This is just me speaking. So then where do you start that education? Well, and the great part about 3D printing today is that there are actually a lot of service bureaus and other things out there. So you don't have to know anything about 3D printing to just start to experience it. But think about it this way. Uh, you're married. You might want to give your wife a wonderful anniversary present that's very personal. And you can go to a department store and you can just buy a bottle of perfume. But imagine if you could buy a bottle of perfume, you could go online and you could go to a service bureau and you could type in her initials, um, love and your name and, and all of that and have a topper made for that uh, perfume bottle and then box that up and give it to her. Isn't that a better gift? Or imagine if it was your mom and you just made her a gift completely from scratch on a 3D printer and sent it to the UPS store to have it printed out. That can be done. And all of that doesn't involve skills. That involves a good model library, which is some great things that you can just customize. So it's changing it in that you don't have to go to a retailer. You get to be and choose what you get to buy. Oh, wow. That is awesome. I didn't even really kind of think of it like that. Um, it, it's almost the way that video production works in some in some instances. You know, um, with my media background, I do um, some small animation projects in 3D space and like After Effects and things like that. And, uh, you know, one of the things for me when I'm working on a project, especially if a client doesn't exactly know, you know, like what they want, they just say, I want something that looks cool. Uh, you know, then I can send them to like a template website where they can look at a bunch of templates of After Effects projects and kind of choose something that they like. And then we'll take that and then kind of customize it specifically for what they're trying Trying to do so is that what you mean with the template library kind of similar thing that's a great way to talk about it because actually the templates I mean you know think about what would PowerPoint be without templates right and <laughs> right so you know that's where 3d printing is gonna go much wider in the market is when there are really good high quality templates 
you know, 3D clip art. Yeah, 3D clip art is right, right. a great way to talk about it. So if you know, I, I love the old car thing too. I have a '72 Camry Ghia convertible that I need to make a new little lens for you know a light inside the car. I, I can do that if I have those skills. But what about people that don't have those skills? There's a lot they can do, and especially with gift giving like Mother's Day, Valentine's Day, Father's Day. Imagine this tie, you know, for your dad with yeah. you know his initials in it. And, you know, uh, buying a ring, you're going to buy an engagement ring for someone? Well, maybe a custom 3D printed ring holder with, you know, your fiance's, you know, name on it. That some, makes it just a little more special. Or marry me. That's right. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. You know, you guys are fantastic individuals. Thank you so much for joining us today and talking a little about a little bit about your business. Uh, for everybody listening out there, you can go check out uh, Tracy and Tom at hasdesign.com. Check out their podcast at 3dstartpoint.com, co-host of WTFFF podcast, all about 3D printing. Um, thank you guys so much. Appreciate your time. Thanks Thank so you, much Ryan. for having us. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're live right here at CEO Space 2015 in lovely Las Vegas, Weston Lakes Resort and Spa. We're going to take a quick commercial break, and we'll be right back. Mm-hmm. 